Is buying an investment property unethical? Is it immoral? Uh, because a lot of you think it is, and that's okay. Uh, and a lot of think, and a lot of you think it isn't, which is also okay. There was a post in the Facebook group, um, and the original poster. She she put that she'd sacrificed and saved and built a built a deposit up, and then she went and purchased an investment property. And she was getting all this hate for being an evil overlord and landlord and all that stuff. And she was conflicted. She orig- she deleted the post, which is fine. Uh, if you put a post up and you change your mind and you want to delete it because you can't be bothered dealing with all the stuff or alternatively, if you put a post up and you're thinking, oh, that was dumb. I shouldn't have said that. You're welcome to delete it. That's not the problem. Someone else put a a post up about this and it exploded and we've turned the comments off because we don't want the Facebook group to be feral, all right? Uh, We've all got our own view. We're all entitled to our own view. Everyone is always welcome, but it it gets to the point where, you know, this is not fruitful and it is a welcoming community. I'll delete stuff if it's against the rules. You can look at the rules in the Facebook group. I'll delete stuff if it is, uh, if it's sexist, if it is racist, is it, if it's, plain horrible or if you're trying to flog your own stuff and promote yourself and all that stuff. But I wanted to talk about this ethical dilemma about buying an investment property. And I think it's important. And look, I've written like a page, like two pages full of kind of notes. And I just, because I just wanted to get my thoughts out. And I'll start by saying uh, there's no right or wrong to anything that is legal because everything's interpretation, right? Um, I, I've, I've written the same thing, uh, the following things. We experience the world as we see it. And I've certainly learned this. And this is why it's important when we talk to people about their story about growing up with money, they do have a story because they've experienced stuff and they've seen the world how they experience it. And I honestly believe every single one of us has seen the world differently, have experienced the world differently, and now we see the world how we perceive it to be true. And I have personally, I've come a long way as I've gotten older, and I'm sure a lot of you are on this journey, a lot of you are older than me, and are also on this journey. Uh, some other um, comments that I've written down uh, in the, I guess, through the lens of I'm learning is just to seek first to understand. We've talked about this on the uh, on the podcast before. Don't try, like if you've got a view about something and this is like, I, I've been guilty of this in the past. That's, that's, yeah, sure. Go and look at all, everything I've said or written ever. I'm kind of on the view now, like I really don't want to convince anyone of anything. I just want to have a conversation. I want to learn from all of you because we've all got these different experiences. So, if we go into a, a discussion or a debate or a topic and just go, look, this is what I believe and this is why. I, I don't need to tell you that you need to become a full-on Trump-loving capitalist pew, pew America and I don't need to convince or tell you to become you know, socialist extreme, other side of the boundary, you know, the government needs to provide everything. I don't need to work because the government provide, like all these mindsets, like we don't need to convince each other. We just have to say, look, this is what I believe and this is why. And then if we have an inquisitive mindset, we can learn and maybe become better people from learning from other people's experiences, either end of the spectrum. I I thought it was interesting and excuse me if I'm kind of just ranting around this topic and I will go into the whole property thing because I I have written a two page of notes. I just in terms of this whole, you know, ethics and like the, because the, the, the discussion kind of, when you look at it, it looked at socialism, communism, capitalism and As a podcast host and a leader of the My Millennial Group, I'll hang my hat on the view that 
I think the worst system in the world is capitalism. But I also believe the best system is capitalism. Okay. And this is where, and, but this is just where I've arrived after hearing stories, after researching, as after looking at through different lenses. Okay. The parallels that I've kind of drawn is you look at, think of the most um, extreme controlled country that you can think of. Uh, it might be the Middle East. It might be in Asia. It might be. Uh, in Eastern Europe, wh- whatever that is. Like, think of the most extreme, all right? That's really horrendous on that side. Now, if I look at the other side of the spectrum and we look at the most, quote-unquote, free, okay? Freedom, democracy, pew, 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 America. That's also horrendous. They've got the biggest freaking problem with guns and violence. They've got the biggest freaking problem with incarceration. They've got the biggest freaking problem with, um, you know, medicine and looking after their citizens. So, if we look at both extremes, it's horrendous. We are very grateful to be living in Australia. We are very grateful, I believe. And again, I'm. this is so far beyond the scope of uh, a money podcast, But hey, we're here now and might as well have a chat with you. And I'm happy to be wrong on all this. That's totally cool. Um, Because I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just unpacking what I think about this issue. If we look at, you know, those two extremes, I think the Commonwealth and where we've landed under our system of government is pretty balanced. Like you look at Canada and America, they're on the same bit of dirt, right? And there's a line that goes through it. Canada does not have the same freaking problems to the extreme as the US. So, I've resolved in my life, Australia, Commonwealth, that system of government. uh, And I'm not talking about um, the English invading the world and taking over. I'm not talking about that. So, you know, hear my heart here. I'm just talking about systems of government. I think we've landed pretty good. Okay. So, that's kind of my view on it. Now, within that, there are obviously problems, absolutely. Uh, But we have to, as a society, I believe, take individual responsibility where we can and be good people, be generous and all that stuff. And just acknowledge that my view is different than your view. And that's okay. And I'm not even, this is not a political spiel. Again, it's just me responding to this uh, notion that, um, someone said owning an investment property is immoral, okay? And I'm not singling out any people because I, I really didn't read a lot of the comments, all right? Because it's just it just goes so far beyond. It's like, this is not fruitful, guys, so we need to back off. But the whole thing about ethics, morals, um, and all that, it is so, so diverse. And what you think is ethical. I might not think is ethical. What I think is ethical, you might not think is ethical. I've written a list here of things that I don't think are ethical, but that's just me. Am I right? Dunno. Am I wrong? Dunno. This is just the way I see the world. And I thought I'd share them with you just for a bit of lols. Glenn James, that's me. I personally think that any buy now, pay later, uh, payday lending, money in advanced um, thing is not ethical. I, I just think it does more harm than good. It's simple as that. I think poker machines are not ethical. I think it's a it's a grey world. Uh, there's a club down the road from where I live, big club, and. I was at one of the events one day and they've probably got the biggest pokey floor around wherever I live, probably within 200 kilometers, right? And the CEO of the club was standing up at an event and saying, we do so much for the community. We are so good. We do this, we do that. I felt like standing up and saying, you're a bloody hypocrite because you can't 
stand up and say that crap where you've got the biggest pokey den on the freaking planet that probably does more harm to the community and families within your, in your local community than the good you're doing with the left hand while the right hand. Like, so I, I just think pokies are not ethical. And I think, um, sure, it's a revenue source for clubs, but don't get me started on that. I think gambling ads on TV are not ethical. Okay. And this is the whole thing. Just because it's legal doesn't mean it's ethical. And just because it's ethical doesn't mean it's legal. So, and this is this whole wild thing, right? Uh, yeah, I hate gambling ads on TV. I can't stand it. It's It should be illegal. It's, I believe it's not ethical. So, owning an investment property and being a landlord. And again, I own an investment property. I am a landlord. It's not on my list as being not ethical or immoral. And I'll unpack why, all right? I also think as well, this is a wild thing. Like some people might say, because I'm a business owner and I employ people and quote unquote profit off people uh, is immoral. Just think about that. So I employ people. I run a business that makes a profit. Am I morally correct in doing that? And this is the kind of lens that we're going to start to walk down when we talk about this investment property being a landlord thing, because I think there's a common denominator in this whole thing. And again, I I really must confess, like, You'll probably come at me because I'll say stuff that you categorically are enraged by. Uh, and that's fine. I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just saying what Glenn James thinks after seeing all this stuff in the Facebook. I'm probably more of a free market guy than a socialist guy. But I think you're allowed to be both. But you've got to make sure you've got the right heart and you're not wanting to screw people. Okay. So that's just my vibe. I think we should be able to do what we like. I think we should be able to invest in things and participate in society as long as we're doing things legally. And I was going to write down another thing. So anyway, if you're still listening, I, I've i kind of written down um, four types of landlords that I see in the world. And I think I've written down one, two, three, four, five types of tenants that I've seen in the world. As a landlord, these are the categories. You're well off and you're an asshole and or a tight ass. As a landlord, you could be working class like a lot of us and you could be an asshole or a tight ass. You could be well off and you could be a nice human with a freaking heart. Or you could be a landlord that is working class and you're a nice human with a heart. See where I'm going here? There's this common denominator where if you're an arrogant asshole and you think you're better than everybody, that's the problem. A property isn't inherently unethical. A property isn't inherently immoral. These are the types of tenants that uh, I've thought that could rent a rental property. And I've been a tenant before. You're a low income earner. You're you're in social housing uh, and you actually genuinely need support because you've got um, circumstances out of your control. And it could be uh, disability. It could be um, systemic generational issues where you're actually um, a legitimate candidate for social housing. Another tenant, um, you could be a low income earner and just can't get a leg up. I mean, we all know people, some of us have been there. You just, you've had 
hit by hit by hit. I can't get my leg up. I don't have the best paying job. I'm stuck being a tenant. I'm just in this grind. So I think that's a type of tenant. Uh, another couple uh, is you're a medium income earner and you spend all your money and you're in debt and you don't have a plan. So you're just stuck being a tenant. You're a, another one is I'm a medium income earner uh, and I rent vests and I don't really want to buy and live in the house because genuinely I want to make sure that as I get older, I've invested and I've built wealth uh, because when I stop working, I want to make sure I do have a house over my head. I want to make sure I do have an income to put food on my table, all right? Uh, and then you could be a high income earner that just doesn't want to buy. I mean, I've, I know people who are genuinely very wealthy and they have chosen uh, to rent instead of buy, okay? And not own property at all. So there's this spectrum, okay? And it was funny, I was talking with a friend uh, just this morning in the States who saw the comments in the Facebook group and he owns some investment properties over there. And he said, yeah, it's interesting because some people, like he's offered to sell his investment property to the tenants that he uh, is the landlord of. And I, and he said that he's had some over the years that they're just actually not interested in buying because they can't stomach the level of risk of having a mortgage and and that's that but i want i want to go back to this i really want to go back to this notion that you know a dollar coin or a hundred dollar note is not inherently evil is not inherently immoral is not inherently unethical look at the person who is holding it because we've seen over recent times in the news, just open your web browser and look at news. Human beings can be really scummy and take advantage of other people. And on the podcast, whenever I get a chance to talk about people who own property and have tenants, landlords, landladies, property owners, all that stuff. And please don't come at me for saying landlord. I mean a person who owns a property. I got attacked on LinkedIn for not saying landlady and hear my heart. I'm saying property owner who, yeah, anyway. And this is the thing, like we can't open our mouth anymore without someone being upset and offended because you didn't say the right thing. And I think we always have to look underneath and and particularly for me, I ask for grace as I do this podcast. Can you just please look at the underlying heart of what I'm trying to say and the nuance that I might get wrong, don't hang me out to dry on that. So my underlying thing is when I've talked about um, landlords, landladies, I would absolutely stress do not take advantage of your tenants. You are not better than anyone. You are not more superior than anybody. We are all just people. No one is above anyone. Look after them. I, I would say the same if you're a business owner. If you have this view that I just want people to churn, to burn, to use and abuse and to profit off, and you think that you are above them, you have a very, very, very short lifespan in business and you'll have high staff turnover. Everyone will hate you. You'll be known as the asshole that you are. So you've got to look after people. So if you own property with tenants, don't be a tight ass. If they say, hey, um, the back door's broken, fix the bastard, they, are not renting a property off you. They are living in their home. And 
this I just so hate. And this stems from me living as a tenant myself where the owner of the property thinks they're better, are a tight ass, and is just minimum, minimum, minimum. I don't care about you. I just need the rent paid. I want to pay less maintenance. And the same for property managers. If you are a manager of a property and you work for a real estate, I know every phone call you get is a problem, but please hear me loud and clear. The people who pay your wage, which are the tenants, don't treat them like crap. You are not better than anybody because you sit in your freaking office and you control all these properties. I've had too many experiences with property managers who think they are better than anyone that I know. And that's rubbish. And if you do not like working with people, you need to quit that job and go and work in a factory and do something else. And I've had recent experience with a dear friend of mine who was, who was treated like absolute crap from a property manager and it's just not on. And to make things worse, the landlord was a tight ass, the landlord was an asshole. And if the toilet freaking breaks on a Saturday, you get your freaking plumber out there and you fix the bastard. And I get so pissed off at this whole world where people think they are better than other people. You are not better than anyone. I don't care if you've got a million dollars in your bank account, you are not better than the widow that lives next door to me who might have 10 cents in their bank account. And I hope this episode ruffles your feathers. I hope that what I've said pisses you off enough to make some type of change to, I don't, I don't know, but the, and this is why I've decided in my life, I'm no longer trying to convince anyone of anything. I'm going to tell you, this is what I believe and this is why. I'll listen back to this in a year's time and think I'm so freaking embarrassed of what I said a year ago because I hope that I'm a different person in 12 months time. So if you think property is immoral, if you think property is unethical, that's okay. If you think property is not, that's also okay. That's also okay. But don't go ramming our different life experiences and views down someone's throat. And I'm saying all this with love. I just get, for me, it's a real like trigger point when I talk about uh, landlords who are tight ass scumbag losers and property managers that are the same. And I've met a lot of wonderful property managers. Don't get me wrong. There's just a couple that are like, oh my gosh. But I'll always be nice. Like if you're a property manager, email your tenants, email your clients. That's fine. Do a smiley face after it. We're all just people living on these rock floating around the universe. All right. Well, I, I think I've said enough, but we do live under this capitalist world, this framework. And I actually think as well, like, if we do have problems, how can we make change? We need to talk about these things. We need to not just go, you're wrong, hold your hand up like this and go, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. But not understand and listen to other people. We've always got to listen to other people. No one is better than anyone. I, by some people's standards, I am immoral because I own an investment property, because I have tenants, because I employ people. I'll I'll finish on this. And this is so wild, right? And this is, this is such an example. I always harp on with our money about giving and generosity. Because the moment that we get to the point where I've got to amass every cent for my own personal gain, that's dangerous. And I would hypothesize some of the scumbag loser landlords that I had, and I've shared on the podcast about the previous landlord that I had at the old studio, which was absolutely horrendous. And he actually 
had he was a slum lord and he actually had people living illegally out the back in the units and the moment i found out about that i called the council i complained and my next phone call was calling him saying i'm moving out because someone like that does not get one more cent of my money and i would hypothesize someone like that scumbag who takes advantage of people probably isn't a generous person I don't know, but that's why I'm hypothesizing. And that's why every time I teach money, I believe that we need to always be doing three things, giving some money away, saving some money for future you and spending some to enjoy it. Now, can we do all three things all at the same time? A lot of us can't. I get that. You might be struggling and not have two cents to scratch together. Well, you forget about giving away. We'll help you. You know what I mean? Like, let's get you whole. Let's get you pumping. If you're struggling out there or you might be in debt, I'm not caring about you not being generous. Like, no, we help people like you, right? This is what it's all about. But you know exactly who I'm talking about. If you earn good money, if you're debt-free and you're starting to invest and you haven't got giving and generosity as part of your financial plan, you need to do so as a health check for your own check yourself before you wreck yourself type. It's not all about you. And the last thing I will, and I'll actually finish now, I'm getting ranty and fired up and I'll probably regret releasing this to the public. And I mean, if you're still watching this and you agree with me, maybe leave me a comment of support and like the video. But I have stopped kind of being a bit public and I don't know, like telling people about my own life because unfortunately uh, I get, I attract a lot of hate and it's that thing that I see the world as I experience it and I experience the world as I see it. I used to get a lot of hate for two things, right? And I'll be candid just as an example. I like to fly business class when I travel overseas. You're evil, Glenn. I've got a very nice watch that's worth seven to 10 grand. You're evil, Glenn. I've said numerous times that I own a second car and a freaking boat And not one person has bitched and complained. Why do you bitch and complain about a luxury that I like to enjoy and spend my money on in in relation to the watch or how I like to travel? Well, you don't bitch and complain when I buy a freaking boat and a second car to tow the bastard. And this is this reference point, right? I, I just find it fascinating. So that's why I'm more reserved with how I do my own money now because I can't be bothered putting up with people having a go at me. And sure, I'm public figure and, you know, public podcast and all that crap. That's fine. But we just need to go, hey, that's how you live your life. And that's fine. I don't live that way. Anyway, this is, and again, this is becoming not fruitful, but um, I think the main issue here, uh, where people say owning an investment property is immoral or owning an investment property is unethical. The main problem is the arrogant assholes who own properties and treat people like crap. And that can't be any one of us. Okay. See ya.